On today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to combine two of my favorite minor pentatonic shred sequences into one uber lick that's so hot, it'll make Joe Bonamassa blush. Hey there, kid, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. You know, I think it goes with that saying that every guitar player out there loves themselves the good old minor pentatonic scale. But the problem with it is, it's just so darn short. It seems like especially if you're shredding up that thing, as soon as you begin, it's over. It just doesn't last long enough. Just like me on my honeymoon. So in order to solve the shortness of the pentatonic scale pattern and also mix up our phrasing and play more interesting stuff, players like Joe Bonamassa, Eric Gales, Eric Johnson, and others utilize some minor pentatonic sequencing ideas. They're longer lasting, they sound better, and they're great practice for your alternate picking. So I'm gonna say this is a three-way win situation. On today's lesson, I'm gonna show you guys two of my favorite minor pentatonic sequences that I use all the time that are both based around the number eight. One of them shows you a quick way to play eights while ascending, and the other one will show you how to do a longer eight sequence descending through the C minor pentatonic scale. We're also gonna be talking about some good alternate picking tips along the way here to get you shredding. But before we get into it, let's hear that lick again at stepdad speed. And as always, full tabs for this lesson can be found over on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitars. Just search for hashtag Weekend Wank Shop 256, find the tabs, and start shredding today. Downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and much, much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. This week, I'm gonna be uploading a special supplemental lesson to go along with this that shows you guys how you can reverse these two sequences and use the short eight pattern descending and the long eight pattern ascending through the minor pentatonic scale or any other two note per string scale pattern. So be sure to check that out. All the bonus lessons and stuff are available to everybody that supports the channel, even just at the $1 a month level. So be sure to head over there and check out that Patreon page and start reaping the benefits today. Okay, first things first, here's the scale pattern we're using for the lick. It's the C minor pentatonic scale. Starting off here on the low E string, I'm gonna play frets number eight and 11. A string, eight, 10. Same thing on the D, same thing on the G. On the B here, we're gonna do eight and 11. And on the high E, we're gonna do eight and 11 as well. So you have. That's the regular C minor pentatonic scale. Now on the way down here, we're also gonna incorporate this D note, which is the 10th fret here on the high E string relative to C, that would be a second or a ninth. That's kind of one of those, you know, Eric Johnson isms that guys like Bonamassa and Gales use all the time and it's a very strategically placed note to make the picking of this entire thing work. Okay, first things first, this entire lick is gonna be alternate picked, starting with a downstroke, and uh, like I said, we'll talk about some of the picking tips and stuff later on. First thing I wanna talk about here is what I call short eights. This is a really easy concept to work into your phrasing here, because essentially whenever we play the minor pentatonic scale, we have two notes per string, right? <laughs> All those had two notes on them. So basically, if I play through four strings worth of notes, one, two, three, four, four strings worth of two notes per string is eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is gonna be really easy to phrase as like either eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, or 16th notes, one E and a, two E and a. Now, after I play through that first series of eight notes by playing through the E, A, D, and G strings, what I'm gonna do is to backtrack here onto the D string. So going back to the D now, I'm gonna play up four strings again. So again, that's an eight note phrase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's just been E, A, D, G. That was our first set of eight notes. Then backtrack to D, G, B, E. And I'm not gonna call the pinky police on you if you don't use your fourth finger for those high notes there. Uh, I know somebody in the comments is already typing up. Why don't you use your little finger whenever you're playing these pentatonic phrases? I think it's just one of those habits that develops because so many pentatonic phrases, you know, end with bends and stuff like that. 
And having your ring finger in the front is always better for a big powerful bend than your little finger, if you like most players. So I think I just kind of developed that habit of, you know, if I'm playing these top strings, I'm gonna use that third finger because I'm probably gonna be doing a bend at some point. Okay, so if you're playing that as 16th notes, that'll take up an entire measure of space. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And after that, we start descending through the scale using what I'm going to call the long eights pattern that I came up with a long time ago. Now think of it this way. So before we made eight by going one, two, three, four, then back five, six, seven, eight, right? So it's kind of like four plus four equals eight. But there's a million other ways, well, mathematically, definitely less than a million, but there's multiple other ways out there that you could make the number eight happen. You could do two plus two plus two plus two. You could do three plus three plus two, that's three plus three is six, plus two is eight. And that's essentially what I've done with this long eights phrase. Essentially what I do is I play down three strings, I play down three more, and then I play down two more, and that adds up to a total of eight. Now, whenever we start this phrase off, we're gonna begin here on the D note, the 10th fret on the high E string. We didn't use that on the way up. On the way up, we used the 11, you know? The last thing you played on the high E was this. Now, I placed this 10th fret uh, high E string note right here, the D note, to make that an even two notes on that string, and even more importantly, to keep my pick from getting tangled up. Because otherwise, I would be starting all these strings on upstrokes instead of downstrokes, and it'd be a lot harder to do descending than it was ascending. So anyway, here's how we're gonna play this three plus three plus two idea. Now again, on the high E string here, we're not playing the 11 and eight like you normally would. We're playing the 10 and the eight. That's our first string. Play down the B string. That's our second string. Then play down the G string. That's our third string. So one, two, three. So after we play down the three string phrase, we're gonna back that ass up here onto the B string. So we're just basically going back a string and we're gonna play down three from the B string, okay? So B, G, D. So that's six so far total. So we need two more strings worth to make it eight. So what I'm gonna do is to backtrack again onto the G and then just play the D string. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, that's what I call long eights right there. And it's three plus three plus two going down the scale. After this, what we're gonna do is to backtrack onto the G string here and restart that three, three, two pattern again. So we're gonna play down the G string, down the D, down the A, then backtrack down the D, A, E, then backtrack again to play your two string phrase of A, E. So this started from the G string. We went one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So basically so far the entire descending portion should sound something like this. I just resolved by playing the 10th fret here on the D string, the root note of the scale, the C. So we've had short eights on the way up, long eights on the way down. Let's check it out again here. Here's the short eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Resolve. Now again, that's taking what was just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 notes and making it into a whole hell of a lot more than that. And again, it's just way more interesting than just playing straight up or down a scale. That's like the most boring thing you can do in your solo is to play up or down a scale all the way through. So mixing up the phrasing like this keeps it interesting. And again, very importantly, if you're just looking to practice your alternate picking chops, this is great stuff to work on because of the constant strain changes. It's a real obstacle course for the pick to navigate, but builds character. Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit with you guys about some of the nerdy picking technique stuff that makes looks like this possible. And this is how guys like Eric Johnson and Joe Bonamassa and other guys, uh, Zach Wilde included, play these lightning fast pentatonic phrases that you know kind of favor that two note per string pattern that usually happens in pentatonic scales. I'm gonna use my ever trusty hand fingers as strings example here again. 
But as you're playing through these phrases, it is really essential that your downstroke is hitting and going into the strings and the upstroke is popping out of the strings. Considering that all of these phrases terminate on an upstroke, and when I say terminate, I mean the last note on them is an upstroke. One, two, three, four, one, two, and so on. All of those ended on upstrokes before we moved on to the next string. Considering that you're ending on an upstroke every string, your upstroke is gonna need to be free and clear of the strings. And this is where that Troy Grady, you know, downward pick slanting sort of mentality really comes into play and makes licks like this possible. If your pick was just going up and down like this, and you're having to constantly jump in between the strings and go down, up, hop, down, up, hop, down, up, it would be impossible to play this at any really quick speed. You can do it slowly, but once things start getting fast, you have to have that escaping upstroke. You know, that's the best way to think about this. Again, sometimes people get confused when they talk about the slant of the pick and stuff like that. What I want you to think of is an escaping upstroke, an upstroke that takes you out and away from the strings. I'm exaggerating, obviously you don't wanna pick your hand up every time you play a note, but whenever you play those upstrokes, they should be set at such a diagonal that they come out of the strings. A couple weeks ago here on my channel, I did a video that was all about the secrets of alternate picking and these escaping type pick strokes that you have to use whenever you're doing string changing at high speeds. Be sure to check that one out too if you don't watched it yet. That's Weekend Wank Shop 255. Again, I'll give you a little down the barrel action right here so you can really see that pick hand getting in and out of the strings using that downward pick slanting kind of approach. <laughs> Play it down here lower so you can see the hand a little bit less obstructed. Again, those upstrokes are all just free and clear, you know? There's no risk of me over-exaggerating and hitting the next string because the trajectory of the pick is going out and away from the face of the guitar, away from the plane of the strings. I think a lot of times whenever people see me talk about this stuff or, you know, Troy Grady who kind of came up with all this terminology, what they get out, out of it is that the pick should be kind of in this, you know, tip towards the ceiling, ass towards the ground kind of position like this, and that'll take care of all their picking problems. That's not really it though. If the pick is still traveling straight up and down like that, well, who cares that your pick is now being held at this, you know, kind of diagonally up angle. That doesn't solve the problem. It's not about how you're holding the pick. It's about the trajectory of the pick, okay? A great way to kind of think about how your hand should be feeling as you're doing this downward pick slanting kind of position, it's sort of like this. Put your hand out as if you were doing a handshake motion, right? Now a handshake motion will go kind of directly up and down like this, right? What I want you to do is to take that handshake motion that you're already doing and just show the ceiling a little bit of your palm. Do you see that? How it just kind of like barely tilted the hand so that the palm is slightly exposed to the ceiling. Now do your handshake. You see that? So again, if I was holding a pick in this hand, the trajectory of it would be into the strings with the downstrokes, out of the strings with the upstrokes, which is what we need for this downward pick slanting kind of position. So again, handshake, palm towards the ceiling. Now you're on the right track to start ripping through this stuff. Now again, that downward pick slanting position right there makes it essentially, you know, child's play to change strings after upstrokes because your upstroke is free and clear of the strings. There's no chance of it you know, crashing into another string or having to hop back over to get to the string you're getting to. By making that upstroke pop out, you're giving yourself a great vantage point to kind of dive bomb down onto the next string. And this is really one of the best ways you can practice this stuff, is just to make up licks that really utilize the powers of the downward pick slant, like those upstroke string changes, which is all that this lick is. Now, I mentioned whenever we're going through the lick itself that I strategically placed this D note into the scale. I didn't use it on the way up and the way down. A lot of times whenever guitar players play scales, they look at all the notes that are available on the string, like let's say C, D, and E flat, and they have a tendency to play them up and down the same way, like this. So I played all the same notes on the way down as I did on the way up. But if you do that, that is one, two, three, four, five notes. If you're talking about the picking strokes here, that will result in something that sounds like down, up, down, up, down. 
that ends on a downstroke. Again, it terminates on a downstroke. The last note on that string would be a downstroke if I played it that way, which if you've got your you know, downward pick slant kind of position is gonna be non-advantageous. You're gonna be going down, up, down, up, down, meaning that your pick is gonna be kind of trapped here in the strings. And that also means that all the picking on the next couple of strings is gonna be flipped. Up, down, trapped, up, down, trapped, it's gonna be a real nightmare if you don't phrase it the way that I put this together. Now see, whenever I did that, I ended the short eighths phrase and I began the long eighths phrase with that four note sequence right there. And that four note sequence is very deliberate because then I'm going down, up, down, up. And again, that keeps the picking from getting tangled up on the next couple licks because it's still gonna remain down, up, 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 down, up. Every string in this whole lick will be down, up as long as you phrase it that way. And again, a great added bonus to this, it sounds cooler than playing up and down the notes the same way ascending and descending both. So it kind of has this like double benefit of it's easier and it sounds cooler. Why wouldn't you do it? I'm gonna do a whole video sometime here soon about that little turnaround and how that really changed my pentatonic playing forever and made things that I never knew were accessible to me suddenly possible just by rephrasing that stuff. Again, those are things that I picked up from some of those Troy Grady episodes of Cracking the Code. Uh, be sure to watch those. There's so much great information in those things that you can learn and start applying to your picking to start laying down some lethal licks fast. <laughs> And again, that's the cool thing about these picking strategies too, is you don't have to just apply them to minor pentatonic stuff. That was a two note per string, A major seven arpeggio that I played right there. That's seven root three, five, next octave, seven root three, five, next octave, seven root three, five. And because that's that same two note per string kind of idea that a pentatonic scale has, I can apply that short eights pattern like I did a second ago. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So see what you can come up with using your own phrasing ideas that are based around two note per strings and the short and long eight phrasing concepts. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications every time I drop a new slice of fried gold right here on my channel. If you like what you saw in this video and want to say thanks, be sure to visit that Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Again, I'm also uploading a short little bonus lesson to go along with this to show you guys how to use the short and long eight concepts going in the other direction. So join the Patreon page today and you have access to that bonus lesson. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but it's time to get away from the computer and go practice a little bit. Less clicking, more picking.